Hey there guys, in today's video I am going to be showing you how I put together a super easy and fun ladder toy that I can use for a small parrot. So if that's something you guys are interested in seeing, make sure to stick around because that's going to be coming up right now. <music> This is Jack over at High Red Bird, where I am tirelessly working to find new ways to make the keeping of exotic animals and pets more exciting, more affordable, and ultimately more enjoyable. And in today's video, I wanted to show you guys how to put together a really easy, uh, basic ladder toy that you can use for a bird. Uh, now, the way that I have built this, it really just has one point uh, where it needs to be connected. You can drape this over perches that are already in your animal's enclosure. Uh, you can hang this from the center uh, top of the enclosure to give your bird something it can stand on. Uh, there's a lot of ways that you can change this up. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into how we're going to be putting this toy together. All right, guys, for the construction of this toy, you are only going to need a few items. And you're not even going to need all of the items that I list, but I did want to show you guys one of the ways that I sometimes cheat. Uh, so the first thing you're going to need is a piece of bird safe rope or chain since I am making this for a very small parrot, a green cheek conure. I am going to go ahead and use a shoelace because this shoelace should be strong enough for that bird. But obviously, you know your species of bird, you know the chewing habits of your bird. Please make sure that you use something that is appropriate for the bird that you are building this for. We are going to need some beads. Uh, again, I'm using small pony beads, but use whatever is appropriate for your bird. Uh, big wooden chunks can be a great way to do this. Also, if you've been building anything out of PVC, if you have spare cuts of PVC pipe, that can be a great spacer as well. You are going to want something that you can manage the spacing because we are going to be building on both sides down this piece of rope. Uh, we are gonna have the rope laid out so this will form the base of our ladder. So you want to make sure that you can have enough items that the spacing between the parts of your ladder will be even. Now to make the rungs of the ladder, I'm going to be using some tongue depressors. Uh, now you are going to need to punch holes in to the tongue depressors. You'll need to punch a hole on either side. And I am going to be using my crocodile. I have showed you guys this before. This is one of my favorite toys when it comes to making bird toys. I call it a toy because it's a toy for me. Uh, and it is absolutely incredible. Now, of course, you could use a drill. You could use a hole punch. Um, the thing you want to remember when you are punching your popsicle stick, we are going to need a hole on both sides. And it is not so much important that the holes are the same distance from the outside as it is important that they have the same distance between the two holes. You could, of course, use half the popsicle stick and then the other half of the popsicle stick, and you would get a really interesting look, but it would fit together nicely. But if that spacing between the holes is not even, uh, you will find it's a little bit wonky, a little bit unruly. And then, of course, one other thing that I'm going to be using is some finger traps. I am going to be using them to take up some space at the top of the toy because I don't want to have to use that many beads. Uh, and you guys will see what I mean uh, as we get started. And then, of course, once you have the entire thing done, you are going to need a quick link to hang it up. All right, now first things first, let's jump into putting together the rungs for our ladder. So like I told you guys, I am going to be using my crocodile. Uh, if you want to use the exact same measurements that I am using, for these tongue depressors, I am using the 3 16 inch punch. And the wonderful thing about the crocodile is on the inside, it has a guide and you can measure how far from the end your pieces will be. So I'm going to use a 3 quarter inch spacing from the end. And I'm just going to go ahead, line that up, punch through on both sides. 
And that is what I'm going to use for the rungs of my ladder. So the wonderful thing about the guide is I don't even have to think about it. I just press all the way and those should work really, really nicely. So I do have an assortment already done. But we'll go ahead and move those to the side because the next thing we're going to need to do is use our piece of bird safe rope or chain. Now, the recommendation I'm going to give you guys, you want the piece of rope that you are using to be more than double the length of the ladder that you want. So if you want something that's going to be uh, five to six inches long, you are going to need over one foot of rope. And I'll show you guys why. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the ends. I'm going to go ahead and line them up. That way I get the most usage. Now that I have this folded in half, I'm just going to go ahead and put a knot. It doesn't have to be a very large knot, but I do want to leave a loop that I can use for attaching this toy. Um, and then I have the spaces for the rungs of the ladder. And they're not quite even. They typically don't end up quite even unless your dexterity and hand-eye coordination is absolutely phenomenal. Um, but if they're pretty close, you should be good. Again, this is why I say give yourself a good amount of slack. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, again, to cheat, is I'm going to go ahead and use these finger traps. Now, this part can be a little bit tedious because the end of the shoelace, the end of your rope, can get caught on the inside of the finger trap. So if you use gravity to help you out, uh, that'll usually work pretty well. Uh, you can, of course, use something uh, like a dowel. Uh, the end of a stainless steel skewer is absolutely incredible for this as well. Um, but just you be patient. Uh, the good news is that this is the easy way. So <laughs> uh, I guess some people might consider that the bad news. Uh, you know, you can also, if you push a finger trap together, not only does it widen it up to make it easier to drop that rope through? Um, but it also makes the overall length that the rope needs to go be shorter. So I've got this shoelace just about through. And of course, you don't have to use finger traps. You could just use the pony beads for this part as well. So our goal here is twofold. One, we just want to take up some space until we get to the first rung of the ladder. And we also want to help protect that rope because obviously if the bird chews on the rope through the very top, well then this isn't going to last very long, is it? But now that I have those in place, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to string up the first rung of the ladder that I am building. And already you guys can see that kind of looks like a ladder, um, at least the first piece of it. Now we're just going to go through. We're going to use our pony beads and make them whatever you think is appropriate. Uh, so if your bird loves chewing up the popsicle sticks, if they don't want to climb on the ladder, but they're going to want something that they can shred and destroy, maybe you just want to do one bead between every rung of the ladder. Um, if your bird might end up perching on it, you may want to do a few more. And this part is reasonably straightforward. One of the things I love about so many DIY bird toys is they're a great way to get your family involved. If you have small children, uh, this is definitely something they can do. And of course, you can use this as an educational lesson as well. I know so many people right now are looking for options of different things. If they're having to do uh, assisting with virtual learning, uh, for small children, I mean, obviously you can have them use this as a counting exercise. You know, we've got six beads on either side. You can use it to address colors, maybe address patterns. If you want to do a red bead, a white bead, a red bead, a white bead, um, I could match this by doing blue and yellow, green and yellow. Uh, so you can do a lot of different things there. Once you have the beads in place, we are just going to 
do another rung of the ladder. And then we're just going to repeat this. So as you guys can see, this portion is going to be fairly tedious, but also fairly mindless. Uh, it's really not that difficult to do, and it's just going to take a little bit of time to get it done. This is the type of activity I like to do when I'm sitting on the couch watching TV. If you're the type of person that doesn't really like sitting still, uh, something like this could be better than a fidget toy or a fidget activity because once you are done, you know, not only did you keep your hands busy while you were doing something else, but you end up with a bird toy at the end of it. Now, one thing you will notice, I am using all the same bead for this. Uh, I made sure that the pieces that I am using coordinated in terms of color because otherwise that would drive me insane. Uh, if I was trying to do something like a pattern, I would, of course, be paying more attention to it. It may not be something that I'd try to do while sitting on the couch because if I finished the bird toy and noticed that the pattern was off because I hadn't been paying attention while putting it together, that would drive me insane. Now, the good news is that your bird isn't going to care about that. Your bird is going to like that there is something that they can chew on. Uh, they can chew on the popsicle sticks. They can chew on the finger traps. You can use the finger traps as a foraging place where you can hide maybe seeds or small nuts. So there are a lot of wonderful things that you can accomplish with this pretty straightforward, pretty basic toy. And it does come together in just a few minutes. So it's one of the reasons I really like it. guys now once you have enough rungs that you are happy with it and uh, at the end of the day it's a toy that you're making for your bird you know what's going to be best you can determine what the length is uh, you can go ahead and make your decision if you want to end with either a rung or with beads i recommend ending with a rung because when you tie your knots this uh, last rung is going to give you a lot more that you can work off of a lot more that you can oppose uh, versus if you have the beads and then you have a knot, if that bird chews through that knot, all of those beads might fall to the ground. Um, you know, obviously if they chew through the knot, the entire thing can fall apart, um, but that will definitely cause something to immediately happen, which might encourage your bird to go for that spot in the future. Uh, and I don't know about you guys, but for me, one of the most frustrating things is when I work really hard to put together an elaborate toy, uh, and the bird has learned, here's how I get the entire thing to fall to the bottom of the cage, and now I'm done. Um, so I do like to end with just that bottom rung. Now all I'm going to do is tie a knot on either side, and I am going to try to get it as close to that rung as possible. Uh, now because of the size hole that we used for those popsicle sticks, I am comfortable with one knot, but you may need to use a bigger knot, you may need to use two knots, uh, use what's appropriate for your situation. So I'm going to go ahead, have that done. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pair of scissors um, and I'm just going to go ahead and cut off these ends uh, because as most of us know, ingested plastic can be one of the most problematic things for birds. And these end tips of shoelaces uh, you know, it's a very, very thin plastic that our birds can tear apart very, very easily. Uh, obviously, if you had something like budgies, you may not have to worry about it. Uh, this is going to be going to a degree cheek conure, which is not going to have the ability to chew through pony beads, but it could go through those end tips of the shoelaces. So go ahead and do what is appropriate for your bird. The good news is you can leave the ends of those shoelaces on until you are done making the toy. They do help threading everything. Uh, they make that very easy. Now all I'm gonna do is take a quick link, I'm going to attach it to the top, this loop that we created, and we have built a ladder that we can use for our bird's enclosure. All right, guys, and it really is that simple. With just a few materials and a little bit of time, you can easily put together a ladder toy uh, using the materials that I used, I made it for a small bird. 
using the same technique but larger materials. You can make this for something like a cockatoo or a macaw as well. So in today's video, I am going to go ahead and give you guys a little bit of homework if you guys are willing. Uh, I've walked you guys through a number of different tutorials on DIY parrot toys. And I think it's great that we're all learning how to build things. But I think another way that people can learn is from each other by seeing when people are trying things and knowing that they're facing similar challenges. Uh, so if you guys have not already, I am going to ask you to join the High Redbird Facebook group. The link is in the description section down below. There you can post photos of different toys that you have made, perhaps from the tutorials or perhaps uh, other toys that you've been interested in. You can post requests of things you would like to see. So it really is a great community uh, of bird owners, pet owners in general, learning a variety of different ways to better the lives of their animals and of course themselves by extension. So I do want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, go ahead, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you don't miss out on any incredible content that I'm putting together for you guys. And I hope to see you guys. I need to say thank you to my Patreon patrons for helping to make these videos possible. You can find out more by visiting High Red Bird on Patreon or clicking the link in the description section down below if you would like more information. Thanks! Mm -hmm.